In this recording, I'm going to introduce you to handling payments in Symfony applications using Stripe. The reason why we use a third party service like Stripe is that trying to handle payment processing yourself would mean that your business and your software would need to be compliant with a whole host of regulations and you'd need to be audited on a regular basis. Now Stripe owes much of its popularity to the fact that it was created with developers in mind. So if it's easy for developers to use, it will make its way into a lot of applications, which is very clever. Let's do this. Before we get started, let me just say that I record in high resolution, so don't watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. In order to get started, you're gonna to need to create a Stripe account if you don't already have one. So come to this page here and halfway down the page, you'll see a button which says start now at the time of this recording. I've already got an account so I can just go straight to my dashboard. But basically once you've set up your um, account, you don't actually need to activate it by entering your bank details, etc. If you can see here, I've not actually activated mine, but what you'll be able to do is start developing and using some test data. If you click on your developers tab here, this is where you can go and grab your API keys. We'll be using the secret key for this recording. And as you can see here, I can only use test data because I haven't activated the account yet, but that's fine, that's perfect for us. Okay, let's make a start. So I'm gonna create a new Symfony project with Symfony new, and I'll call this Stripe demo. Then I'm gonna move into that project CD Stripe demo. Okay, and this is that project. So a bit of setup first with PHP Storm. I'm gonna change my language level to PHP 8 because at the time recording, that's what we're on. And I'm also gonna enable the Symfony plugin and the app directory is set to source and the web directory is set to public. Okay, I'm going to require some dependencies. So composer require. Maker, which is the Maker bundle, annotations, same for annotations, and a web profiler bundle. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Maker to create me a controller. So Symfony console make colon controller. I'll call this payment controller. The reason I'm doing it with Maker is that this will give me a, a folder called payment inside of my templates folder and inside of that a index.html.twig file which will contain the checkout button. I'm gonna add a header and a little bit of styling just to make the demo look professional, but you don't need to do this if you don't want to. If you do wanna add this stuff, I'll leave a link to the GitHub repo, but this is a, a Stripe lesson, not a styling lesson. And I've just grabbed these styles from Bootstrap. Okay, so let's start up a dev server and see what we've got so far. Can do that with Symfony server colon start. The hyphen D means set it running in the background, detach mode. Here's my payment control. The route is payment. So if we go to here and depend on the end of that, forward slash payment. Okay, so this is the default text that was left over there by Symfony. I'm just gonna move into there. I'm gonna clear out all the styles. I'm gonna clear out all the text that Symfony dropped in there. And then we've got a blank canvas to work with. I'm gonna call parent, which means I'll get the navigation bar. And this looks a pretty good start. Before we go any further, let's decide what our goal should be. Now Stripe has many features and it will take a whole series to cover them all. But for this introduction, we're going to hit a checkout button. This will redirect us to a secure payment page, which is hosted by Stripe with all of the data related to the product or products that we are paying for. And then we'll enter some credit card details or test credit card details and complete the payment. If you navigate to this accept a payment page on the Stripe uh, documents, then you can borrow some of the commands and some of the code that we're going to need. First, we're going to compose that require the Stripe PHP package. So I'll copy that, go over to my terminal, paste that in there, and now I have the Stripe PHP package. Perfect. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this little form here, which just contains the checkout button. Now in real life with this form, you would also post all the cart data for the products that you're paying for, but let's stay focused on Stripe functionality and I'm gonna cheat by hard coding some product data in my controller method. Sorry. 
I'll copy the payment route in the payment controller and we'll create our new checkout route because that's where we're posting to. So I'll change the name to checkout also and also the method name to checkout. And we'll take the code in the body of this method and we'll remove that and we're going to replace it with some Stripe stuff. So first we need to set the API key. We're going to need that in order to communicate with Stripe. So Stripe set API key. I'm just going to replace this with some placeholder text because I'm actually going to put my keys in environment variables because for development and testing you use a test key but for production you have a production key which are two different things. Okay, what we're going to do now is grab this stuff here and basically what you're doing is you post this data to Stripe. This is your transaction data, then it sends back a JSON response it uses the information sent back in that JSON response to create an instance of Stripe checkout session. And that session object will contain the URL which we're going to redirect to, which is hosted by Stripe to complete the payment. So various bits of data which are mandatory here, as you can see. Now because the session object is being created by Stripe vendor code, it'd be good to have a look at it and see what it contains. Just have that bit of control. Always try to get maximum understanding of your application. Don't do things blindly. So I've just styled the button a bit there. I want to dump this out, so we'll go down here and drop a DD at the bottom and pass the session variable into that. Check out my Symfony VAR dumper lesson if you want to know more about dumping out variables using VAR dumper. Okay, so I hit the checkout button and we have an error. My secret key because I'd only pasted in some uh, placeholder text. So I need to create a .env.local file because my test key will go in the local file. The production key will go on the production server. I only need my test key for development. Next, I'm going to create a binding so that I can just inject this into my controller methods. So in config services.yaml under services defaults, if you add a bind key, and then I'm adding a variable called stripe sk, as in stripe secret key. And then I can grab the environment variable like this. And I just need to change the name to stripe underscore sk, which is what I'd named it. So now straight away we'll be able to inject this into our service constructors, but we can also inject it into our controller methods, and that's exactly what we'll do. So in the checkout method, stripe sk and then we'll replace the secret key goes here, placeholder text with stripe sk, and we'll give this a refresh and try to have another look at it. And we have another error, but it looks like I've got an extra parentheses on the end of there. So back to services.yaml, and yes, I just removed that, refresh. Great, so now we have our stripe checkout session object. As you can see, there's a lot of data here, but hopefully you should be able to pick some bits out. For example, we can see an amount subtotal there. I should point out that that's in cents. This isn't a $2,000 t-shirt that we're selling. And as you can see here, the payment method type is card. Okay, the next thing we need to do is redirect to the Stripe page and we grab the session URL. So as you can see at the bottom of the session object, this is the URL that we'll be redirecting to. So I'll paste the uh, code from the Stripe documentation in there as a guide. This code, by the way, that's using the Slim framework, which is a PHP micro framework. We need to take that and sort of adapt it into Symfony um, code. So we can do that with this redirect, again, session URL, and then 303 is just the uh, status code for a redirect. Now we need to handle these, success URL and cancel URL. This is where Stripe's going to redirect to on success or on payment failure. So we need to add our own URLs there. We can do that by using this generate URL and then we need the name of the URL. So we'll call the first one success URL. We're not going to pass any parameters. What we do need to do is generate a full URL and not just a path because it's going to be Stripe's code hosted on Stripe's servers, which is redirecting to our application on our server. And we can generate the full URL with that third argument, URL generator interface, absolute URL. Okay, let's create the same for cancel 
And now we need to go and create methods to handle the two new routes. So the first one will be success. So I need to change these things to success URL. Copy that over to name, little trick in PHP Storm. If I hold shift, alt, and then press U a few times, it gives me an underscored version. Okay, and then the file is going to be success.html.twig. Don't need any of this. And then I'm doing the same for cancel. So I've just zoomed forward. I've copied and pasted in there and changed all the references to success to references to cancel. Now I'm going to copy the index.html.twig file a couple of times. Call one of them success. I'll call the other one cancel. And then obviously we'll have to put a bit of custom code, some kind of success and failure messages in there. So we'll remove the code that we don't need from these two files. And I think we'll go over to the documentation because I've got stuff in there which might inspire us. If we have a look at their success, here we go, success HTML. We can grab this here, go back to ours and just paste that in. So that's okay for success. We'll paste the same message into cancel and we'll just customize this because obviously it isn't successful. So thanks for your attempted order. We would appreciate your business, but the payment failed. Okay, and that can go to failures at example.com. I've realized that our titles are fairly meaningless, so we'll change this to payment fail in the success one. We'll change it to payment success, and let's see what we have in our index HTML file. Hello, payment controller. That's not very good. We'll change this to make payment. Before we give this a test drive, I'm just going to go back to the controller and make sure that everything looks all right. So if you look at our session create, in the line items array, each item in there represents a different product and the sale of one of those or a quantity of that product. Okay, moment of truth, let's test this out. So testing, click the checkout button and then you'll be redirected to the Stripe checkout payment form. So let's give this a go. Click the checkout button and we're redirected to Stripe. So far, so good. Now you need to use test credit card details. You can get those on the Stripe documentation. So click checkout button, fill out payment details with test card information. So if we enter 4242, blah, 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 and then a future date and any security code and also a postcode, this should work. I've done it behind the scenes and it's redirected us to the success URL. So it's looking good, it looks like we have a successful order. If it had gone badly, it would have redirected to this cancel URL, which obviously would have shown this message. But let's go and check the Stripe um, dashboard for our payments. And so, yep, that's the one that I've just made, the one at the top. So it's gone through, everything has worked okay. And if you click on your payments, you can actually go and look at them in more detail. So as you can see, payment method, uh, checkout summary, um, subtotal, all the information that you could possibly want is there. Even has stuff about the location that the payment was made from. So that's gone pretty well. I hope you've managed to follow along. As you can see, I've just scratched the surface. There's so much more to Stripe. Things like subscriptions, invoices, uh, customer information for when people use the same credit card twice. Uh, you can put products in here, add coupons. It's really powerful. Yet despite of its power and all its functionality, I think you'll agree that was fairly easy to follow along with. And if you connect that to your bank account, you actually have a working solution which you can use in your application today. Why not reach out to me in the comments and tell me what made you watch this video? Maybe there's something that either myself or my subscribers can help you with. If you got value from what you've watched, then give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. And finally, if you want YouTube to show you more of my stuff, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material every few days. Details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage. I'll see you in the next one.